So it all started here, actually, at the University of Geneva. And we go back to the 90s. So at that time, I was professor here, fascinated by quantum physics, fascinated by applications. And so, very naturally, quantum cryptography was one potential application. And we started, and Grégoire, someday, came as a candidate for a PhD. And he did a PhD in quantum cryptography, entanglement cryptography. And uh, what I discovered, and what he only revealed to me at that time, is that he actually did uh, also an MBA in Lausanne without telling me, because he was afraid that I would tell him that he doesn't work hard enough on his PhD. So, so and toward the end of my PhD, there was this American company that sent someone to Geneva. They were active in quantum technologies, or they wanted to be the pioneers of quantum technologies, a company called Magic Tech. They went to visit Nicola and say, oh, can we collaborate? And uh, they proposed to essentially uh, license the technology, and we would have lost all the control of the technology, which we didn't like, so we decided to, to do it uh, on our own. Gregoire decided. <laughs> That's your choice. So I, I, yeah, so first of all, because Nicola you know, rejected my first proposal, which was QSEC, uh, quantum security QSEC, which in French has a funny meaning. So Nicola rejected it, and we were in this building, and next to this building there is the, the TV tower, and at the time the name of the Swiss TV company was ID Suisse. And uh, so ID, ID in French, ID quantique, so instead of having Swiss IDs, we had quantum IDs, and so that's how we came up with the name. Well, the vision was, of course, quantum cryptography, and uh, the fun and the excitement of a startup. But that's not enough, because there was no market. So we also needed to have some products that we could sell, like uh, single photon detectors, quantum random number generators, and so we started actually with these two products, keeping in mind that the real goal is quantum cryptography. We did get the first order yeah. from, from a customer, it was a university in the US, mm -hmm. and they ordered the first product, which was a detector, a single photon detector, before the company existed, before the product existed, but I remember that I made an offer, I put on paper the spec sheets that we thought we might be able to achieve. This was in October, uh, early October 2001. I sent this by, by fax, at the time there were fax, and I got back a signed order from University of Boston, actually. And so at that time, the clock started ticking and I had to, we had to start developing the product. We had six months. To, to develop the product and, and ship it. Well, so the company was funded with a minimum amount, 100,000, and then we had this first order, about 200,000, and then we won a first prize, the prize de Vigier, again 100,000. So this is actually, compared to today's eyes, peanuts. But at that time it was significant, and so we started like that. And we had this flexibility of the university, and we were actually having the offices here in the back, within the university building. And then the real ramp up started when we found our first investor. And then we moved to Carouge, where we are still, um, and we hired then, I don't know, the first bunch of about 10 people, and so on. And so that was kind of the real first step, but since then there have been many, many steps. So the initial support was kind of uh, minor. You have to remember, at that time, establishing a spin-off was kind of revolutionary. I mean, my colleagues didn't really understand that. Most students were kind of very afraid. This is dirty money, we don't want that. Uh, things have completely changed. And as we already said, it is the flexibility that the university offered that has been our main initial support. And then a bit later, also, the national funding helped us, but it is Switzerland, so no money, no public money ever goes into a private company. The money goes into the university, and the university, for instance, developed new products that are then transferred to the industry. And that's the kind of support we got within Switzerland. And we, we also got some support from the European Commission through the framework program, so the research program 
from the European Commission, and I think that was very useful uh, in supporting research. It was, it was money that was more flexible in terms of, of use. It has been very important for, for IDQ. Frankly, no. I, I wouldn't imagine, uh, I had no real idea. I had the, the expectation, the excitement. I was hoping, of course, that we would make it to 20 years and even, of course, beyond that. But how exactly? There are many surprises and I think that's part of the adventure and it's part of the fun. I hope that IDQ would be a company making products, you know, with, with manufacturing and, uh, you know, everything from you know, the ID, the development, the manufacturing and the sales and uh, I think because that's important. I think in Europe we need industry. We can't just do uh, concept and then have everything manufactured outside of Europe. So that was part of the, of the vision and the hope and that's something I hope we can continue. Well, I feel lucky because I feel lucky that I've been part of this. You know, I was in a sense at the right time, at the right place, so I feel lucky of this. And because I've met, you know, the right people at the right time also, because starting by you, because, you know, I did research, interesting research in an applied field, and then our investors, it's always about meeting someone. You know, it's, you don't meet a, a wallet, you meet someone, you connect with this person, and then the wallet opens, and so. <laughs> So that's, so I feel lucky uh, for this. Okay, very nice, yeah. Uh, we are still pioneers, so we still want to go on. Probably what changed a bit, I mean, we are no longer just a bunch of physicists, we are kind of real entrepreneurs. And so uh, the, 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 the focus has shifted, but this uh, pioneering spirit, uh, I, I think uh, I will die with it. <laughs> I think one mistake we did not do when we started the company was to think that we were running a sprint. Actually, when you start a company, you run a marathon. And the marathon is not over. And I think it's going to be a never-ending marathon, but uh, with different challenges coming up. And we need to keep this pioneering period to continue through, uh, along this path.